Well, hey gang, welcome back. My name is Brian Stites with Remax Results and Twin Cities Real Estate Guide, and you are here for part two of our first time homebuyer series. We're gonna get started right now. All right, tip number four, you are ready to start doing some research. And I'm sure your agent can provide you with some great sites, uh, apps, that would be super handy in terms of looking at homes, uh, and I'm sure you're tech savvy because most people are nowadays, but there's a lot of great tools out there that your agent can provide you. One thing I want you to not do is I want you to not search for homes on Zillow. Don't do that. What you're going to find there is a lot of outdated information regarding homes. They do have some good stuff on schools and school boundaries and things of that nature and some other tools on there that are kind of nice. But one thing I would not do is I would not search for homes on Zillow. I don't know how many times uh, my, a client has called me and said, hey, I found this great home, it's lovely. I wanna take a look at it. And then sure enough, I look it up. I said, well, where'd you find it? Oh, I found it on Zillow. Oh, you found it on Zillow. So I look it up and sure enough, it sold six months ago. Or I had one that sold two years previously. Uh, and Zillow puts a lot of information on there like um, pre-foreclosures and things of that nature that kind of show up to a consumer if they're not um, looking properly. They show up as, as active homes and they're not or they'll have homes that already have offers on them. Super frustrating. So I would revert back to your agent, find some great tools that they have to offer you and use those. All right, tip number five, you wanna know your market. So is this a buyer's market that you're in? Is it a seller's market that you're in? What the heck does that even mean? Okay, well, let's talk about it. So let's say that you're in a seller's market, which we have been here in the Twin Cities for a number of years. So a seller's market basically, basically means that it's in the seller's benefit in that current market. So low inventory of homes, high amount of buyers looking at those low inventory um, home supply. And so what you have there is you have a whole bunch of people fighting over not many homes. And so what that usually does is increases the price of the home in that market or you might have multiple offers on that home so you have to know that going in so you can develop a proper strategy or are you in a buyer's market what's a buyer's market just the opposite right we have a lot of homes not many buyers so in that market you might see price drops you might be able to offer five or ten percent less on a particular home or ask for some concessions or something of that nature so the strategy is different in the market and so you need to know you know what you're getting into when you're when you're doing this and obviously that's a great question for your agent your agent should know what kind of market you're in a couple of other things you want to know about your market is you know how long does it typically take for homes to go under contract what's the sales price ratio is it 95 percent of the ask price is normal or is it 105 percent you need to know those things when you're going in um, is it common for sellers to pay your closing costs some markets, it, some markets it's common, some markets it's not. It depends if it's a buyer or a seller's market. Uh, but that's a great thing to know going into it so you know how much money you need to save. This is the time you've been waiting for. Now it's time to go look at homes. Tip number six. It's not really a tip though, is it? Maybe it is. By this time, you should know what kind of home you're looking for. Uh, your agent may have given you a questionnaire to fill out. You might have talked about it on your initial consultation, but you should know, you know, are you looking for a three bedroom, two bathroom, one car garage rambler, or are you looking for something different? You should also know what are my must haves? That's kind of the key thing. You want to identify your must have. So if your must have is three bedroom, two bathroom, uh, one car attached garage, then your agent can set up a search with those specific must haves. And then after that, you're going to have a section of would like to have. So I'd love to have a fenced yard. I'd love to have a yard with trees. I'd love to not have any neighbors at all because I don't like people. I don't know. That's up to you. Okay, your agent's going to set up a search mainly based on the non-negotiables that you've set up with them. You've given them criteria like three bedrooms, two bathrooms, things of that nature. And you can get those in many different fashions. Uh, a lot of them will do it on their MLS and that'll come right to your email. You'll check them out. A lot of times you can put a heart by them. Depends on what MLS you're using. In ours, you can put a heart by them. You can put a light bulb, things of that nature. We also have an app called Home Spotter, which I really love. It's fantastic and it's really easy to use. It's updated in real time. So that's another great option in our market, at least in the Twin Cities, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul market is Home Spotter. That's fantastic. So once you get all of that information, you're ready to start looking at a home. 
ideally, you'd want to set up a schedule with your agent based on your family situation, your life, and your personal life, and all that kind of stuff, uh, so that it just works well. So Wednesday nights or Tuesday mornings or whatever works for you. That's what we do here, and it just seems to work really well for our clients. Now it's time to go looking at houses. So you, let's say you found three or four or five houses you want to go look at. So ideally, you'll want to send those to your agent about 24 hours prior to when you're gonna go looking for homes. And the reason you do that is just, a, well, several reasons. It's a courtesy to the home seller. It allows them to get their house set up, kids taken care of if they have kids or pets, uh, things of that nature. And you know, when you go to sell your house, you're gonna want that from other folks too. So it's just a nice feature. And then also, a lot of times, homes will have a uh, renter in there. So there'll be a 24-hour rental notice that might be, in place by the landlord, things of that nature. In addition, it just allows your agent to have time to set up the schedule to go view these homes in the proper order and things of that nature. So super important, ideally 24 hours um, in a hot market like we've had here in the Twin Cities. Uh, you know, maybe it's, you know, a couple hours before you go and you try to get in there and that's fine too. But you know, in the normal ideal situation, you're gonna wanna set those up ahead of time get them to your agent and get that set up. Okay, it's important to go into this with a positive, upbeat mindset because honestly, there's things that can happen and then often do happen during the purchase of a home. There's a lot of moving parts uh, that go uh, into purchasing a home. So, and that's why you're hiring a, a real estate professional to guide you through the process. I kind of like to use the analogy of a pilot. You know, if you're going to fly from here to let's say Australia or somewhere, and you're taking off in a 747 and you're flying over the ocean for 18 hours, are you honestly gonna hire the pilot that just got out of pilot school and has landed a plane once, never a plane that big? Probably not. Why would you do that with your financial well-being? It doesn't make any sense. You wanna hire the best pilot you can find to take you over uh, the pond, in a sense. What's nice about it on the buyer side is it doesn't cost you anything to hire the best. All right, this is the end of part two of our first time home buyer series. Come back again next week for part three. We're gonna finish it up there. Thanks a lot for coming. Have a great day. If you enjoy these videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there. You can click on the little bell and you can get notified when we have new videos coming out, which we do each week. So thanks a lot.